All right, so we're in the net booting fundamentals and customizations. Uh, I'm Justin Elliott. Um, I work here at Penn State. I'm an IT manager and a software developer. Um, I always hate talking about myself, but I'll, I'll lay it out there quickly. Um, I'm one of the Mac Enterprise um, .org founders, as well as Mac, formerly Mac OS X Labs years and years ago. Um, but, uh, very lucky to work on a lot of Apple projects internally with, um, um, with Mac Enterprise. So we've done webcasts over the years and things like that. Um, so some of you may have been on the Mac Enterprise list for some time. That's also hosted here at Penn State. It was at CUNY for a while. CUNY, I may be seeing it wrong. No, it's CUNY. Anyway, so the Mac Enterprise list is also hosted here as well, so um, I'm really happy to be a part of that. Uh, I've done Mac Systems Administration for about 20 plus years, um, so um, back in the day of System 7 and RevRDist, anyone? RevRDist, anyone? So those were the fun days. Um, then 1995 was depressing and we thought Apple would go away, but they didn't, yay. Um, so I've been, and I was working on Mac OS X since early days and I've had a Unix background as well. And so it tied in very nicely. And so once OS X came around, Rhapsody, anybody know? Next called Rhapsody, of course, Developer Preview 1 and all that stuff. I've been working on it since then. Um, so um, at any rate, I'll go, I'll go ahead and get started. So that's kind of the background on, on me, if, for those who care. If they don't, we'll just get to the slides. <laughs> OK, so uh, the, I know surveys are kind of weird sometimes by show of hands, but it does help me. It also gives a sense of the feeling of the room of where we can go and we can spend more time on or less time on, depending on the levels of interest and experience, too. So, And this, like I said, this is the, the foundational netboot. So if you're here for more advanced netbooting stuff um, that you may not be, uh, you may not have as much information there, but I will show some of that. But again, it's for foundational to build on, and we'll touch on some more advanced topics later in it uh, as the presentation goes on. So, uh, so who's new to Mac Systems Imaging uh, and deployment? It's okay to raise your hand. I won't make fun of you. Okay, okay, that's great. You're in the you're in the perfect you're in the right place. So that's that's great. Um, and who has used Netboot before? Why are you here? Just kidding. I know. I like to go to every session, even if I know uh, even if I think I know a portion of it, because I always get something out of it. I learn from. I've seen a lot of faces here. I know I've done presentations, and I always learn something else. So I don't know everything. I know some. A few things, so I'll share with you what I know, and definitely I would love to hear what you guys uh, have um, experienced, guys and gals, of course. Okay. Um, so, yep. So for the overview, we'll talk about. Uh, so what is netbooting? Well, netbooting in a nutshell is basically a way of uh, specifically an OS 10 server. Yes, there are open source solutions and everything else, and you can get it running on Linux and all of that and doing it other ways. I'm talking about what Apple offers, pure vanilla Apple solutions today. There are other solutions that you can look at and work on later, absolutely, but that's not what we're talking about today. Uh, sorry, but anyway, it's a system uh, to boot Macs over the network um, from an OS 10 server. It's, easy, it's more easily done on the same subnet, um, and it, it is a way of making um, a consistent environment for all machines based off of one centrally managed disk image. And we'll get into uh, uh, how to make those and how that's con why that's convenient. But it, it's, 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 an, it's basically, you have a, let's say you, an example of an application of this would be, you have a new lab of 50 machines. You have an OS 10 server and you have a very reliable local network. You can net boot all of them holding the N key when you boot up. The Mac, the client, sends out a broadcast to the network saying, hey, where's their new netboot server? After it gets a DHCP address, I should mention that, DHCP is critical. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself here a little bit, but, and then it would boot up from the server. The server would say, here's what the files you need to get started. And it does it completely on in memory and doesn't touch the internal disk. You can use the internal disk for caching files once it gets booted up, which makes it run faster. But we'll touch on another aspect of diskless netbooting and the advantages of why you would want to do that. And it's built around, this is Apple's verbiage at the end, built around network protocols, TFTP, uh, BSDB, boot services, discovery protocol, a bunch of other protocols, um, and files and folder structures, which we'll, I'll, I'll show you and do a demo. The thing I forgot to start off with, too, this is a demo. There are going to be a lot of demos. Uh, the demo gods sometimes are nice, sometimes they're not. So. Um, if anything, I apologize now if something doesn't work, but I've been testing the heck out of this system, and so I've erased this machine 18 million times. 
So I have two different netboot uh, net line and server installations. So if something goes wrong, we'll boot from the other partition. So with that, we'll continue. I've got some screenshots too in case all you know what breaks loose. But we should be okay. Knock on wood. All right. Um, and, and the other thing I want to add, yeah, here's another statement from Apple. It's in their documentation. They have extensive and also have the URLs available for that too. This presentation will also be available as a PDF download on the Mac admin's website in a couple of weeks too. So if you need to write any URLs down, come and see me afterwards. I can give you the PDF immediately or it'll take me some time to clean up. So anyway, the NetBoot and NetInstall and NetRestore features of Mac OS X are for you alternatives to managing an operating system and application software that your Macs require to boot up and perform their functions. That's Apple's def definition. So. So the benefits, I talked a little bit about this. Um, so no, no physical media required. So you don't have to go to each machine with a USB flash drive, or an external firewire drive, or anything. So it's really convenient for that. So that, that saves you some, you know, lugging around hard, firewire hard drives, which I actually hate, but we have to do for our labs. And I'll get to, you, I'll get to that, why we have to do that. Yeah, 700 plus machines. It's net booting in that large of an environment is kind of a challenge sometimes. Um, Right, and I'd mentioned you can boot from identical master lab image, maintain in a single place. So if they all net boot, and you, let's say you forgot to install Firefox version 2004, or five, or 8,000, you know how they update all the time. You could, on your server, update a single disk image, add the new Firefox there. Um, this is an over, oversimplification, and we'll get how you would do this. Um, and then all the machines would boot up and boom, they'd boot from that disk image and would already have it installed uh, ready to go. So there's some advantages there for nebooting from the same single disk image that you're modifying in one place and not having to push out files through ARD and otherwise. So um, there are multiple types of nebooting images too. Um, net install, net restore, we'll get to those. So it's not just for booting a lab environment for the same environment, it's for other uh, utility purposes. Installing operating systems, running diagnostics, things like that. And, yep, that's what I just said on the last line. Okay, so there are some challenges for NetBoot too. So, uh, while it has a lot of advantages and things, your networks have to be very robust. Um, meaning you want to make sure DHCP has to work. You really want to have a gigabit ethernet uh, switched if you can. And this trend net switch that we bought, a bunch of these, I mean, everybody probably knows gigabit ethernet switches are so cheap now. They're disposable, they're like, you know, 30 bucks now for an eight port switch. So. You wouldn't want to have a lot of machines going through one single switch like this and then cascading. So you want to be careful in the network and scale your network correctly because <laughs> last year on our lab, um, we didn't look at our topology correctly and we were trying to go through a small Netgear metal um, switch for all of the entire lab. And we, they should have all been going to the backroom switch that has a big, it's a, you know, an enterprise level switch, right? Why we're like, we're like, why is this not working? Well, the Netgear switch is really hot. Well, yeah, because <laughs> we had switches and switches and switches going to this one. We're like, oh, yeah, that's not right. We're networking people. So we fixed that, and it was fine. It's good to go. So I recommend on the smaller, cheaper switches, just plugging in one computer per port. On a higher-end network switch, of course, it can take it has a faster backplane, and it can take the bandwidth. So anyway. Um, Yep, netbooting across subnets is possible. I've heard from many people at the conference that it's currently broken for Lion uh, machines. I have not verified that myself. There may be some folks in the room who have. Has anybody successfully booted uh, Max over across subnets running Lion? <laughs> yeah, sometimes I, 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 I agree with the sometimes because sometimes that's voodoo and you're thinking, well, I'll change this. Yeah. Helper IPs, okay. Okay, okay, great. Yeah, he's, he's, thank you. He's mentioning the helper IPs, and the helper IPs, correct me on any of this, please, anybody. Um, helper IPs are basically when a Mac sends out a broadcast to the local network, the router then says, um, there's a different layer in the ISO model of networking, but it would say, this client's requesting a BSDP. I don't have it. I'll forward it on, and helper IPs tells it where to go to continue the path of how to get to the NetBoot server. You can configure a machine also using some commands to say which server IP to, to boot from using the bless command, and those are covered in the later slides. So, so across net, uh, netbooting across sub, uh, subnets, though, like I said, is, is possible, but does require some tinkering. 
and posting to the forums potentially on different lists. It can be slow for some tasks. We ran into that problem in our lab the other day, and I thought, what is going on with this machine? And we were all, you know, doing network restores and blast image config and things like this, and so some of the networks might have been saturated at the time, so it depends on what you want to do. Um, so system requirements. It's probably a good idea, if you want to do nebooting yourself and support it, that you are the system administrator of the server. You're going to need to have full access to it, so um, you really need to have full admin rights. And we talked about familiarity with your network setup and having DHCP. It's a must. You have to have it. Um, and 100 megabit, this is Apple. these are Apple recommendations, of course, but um, 100 megabit or faster wired network switches. I, there's really, today with the costs being so cheap now, it's, in my opinion, it doesn't really make much sense to not go one gigabit if you can. 100 megabit switched would work, but you definitely do not want to try and net boot over wireless because it's also not supported by Apple. So if you do get it working, great. Don't try to do it more than just a few. Um, but I don't think it, it may not actually work because I believe NetBoot, when the machine boots up, is smart enough to realize what kind of NIC it is if it's wired or wireless. So, And uh, you'll need Mac OS X Lion server. I, we could talk about Snow Leopard and all of that, but Mountain Lion's coming out in a little bit, so we're going to try and stay you know, somewhat current. So we're talking about Mountain Lion today. So you really should try to have the newest OS if you can. Um, Snow Leopard works fine as well. It has net booting. Net booting has been around for quite some time. So, all right. So, system requirements are any Intel Mac with at least 512 megs of RAM. Again, I put that on there because that's an Apple recommendation. I don't think anything ships with less than two gigs of RAM now, right? From Apple. So, 512. I think we can. I think that's reasonable. Uh, Built-in Ethernet connections on board um, the MacBook Air. You can, and John Detroit is going to be talking about more about this. Uh, he's going to be talking about imaging at a Birds of a Feather tonight for the MacBook Air specifically, where they don't have onboard Ethernet, but they have a USB to Ethernet adapter, and you can net boot through that. Um, and, make, and then also make sure you have the newest Apple firmware updates. Really, and there's an asterisk next to that to remind me to mention something about that. I heard recently that there's a thread on AFP 548 that some of the newest machines, sorry, uh, some of the newest machines uh, cannot net boot. And there's a firmware update coming out from them that will probably fix it, but it's one of the newer MacBook Pros, I think. Has anybody heard about this thread on AFP 548 and other reports of it? No? Okay. These are working. These are pretty new MacBook Pros. They're I core i7, so they're really nice, and um, so they're working fine. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't have them here today for the demo. Um, so at any rate, so always stay up to date with firmware updates if you can, um, because those will have the lowest level netboot um, code in them. So when you boot up, that's what actually gets executed. So getting started, you'll need to download uh, the server admin tools. And they, you would think with a, a, a standard installation of Lion Server, these would already be installed. Nope. Apple with Lion Server made everything nice and simple and pretty, and they put it into a single app that is all. It is very. It's easy to use. It has some slider switches like off and on, which is nice. Um, but they did not provide the other tools that you really need to configure a netboot. But that's an easy installation and an easy download. So if you if you go to support.apple.com and you go to downloads and you type in admin tools 1073 or server admin tools, you'll find it, get the newest version, and you'll download it as a disk image. Um, it'll include two utilities that are essential for netbooting. The first one you'll need is system image utility. This is the actual utility that will use the Mac OS X Lion installer app that you download from the Mac application store or imaging from an already pre-configured Mac or uh, from a, there's another source. It's in my slides. I'm blanking on it right now. Yeah, anyway, it's the installer and other pre-existing configured systems that it would then turn into a disk image and then make available through server admin. Server admin would then be used to enable and add the netboot service and I'll show you how. We'll do that here in a, a few minutes. Um, and so the disk image basically is just like any other standard installer. Uh, here are the, min, the admin tools disk image. We'll open that up, and then it will verify. Do I have the patience to wait two seconds? Sure. OK, sometimes I don't. Depends how much caffeine I have. It's sort of admin tools, and it's just a standard package. And you'll run, in, and it will install that into the server. 
uh, folder in the applications directory. So here are all the applications installed. So it's server, the ones we're talking about today are server image utility and server admin. And we'll, again, get to that in the demo. There are the, there are the other things too, but we're going to ignore those. We only really care about these two today. Okay. So system image utility. This is the, the, the heavy lifter who creates the netboot images. Now netboot's a general term that means any image that's created where a machine boots off, uh, from the network. Um, but it creates multiple kinds. And there's the standard netboot by definition, that was the original kind. The netboot um, and the net install, which is what you would use to install over an existing machine that has like 1068 and you wanna net install line on top of it over the network and it can do that. And the net restore has a lot of different functionality in it um, that it can, it can create a pristine, it can erase the drive and install a pristine 10.7 system. You can also use it to restore an existing machine and it's probably the, uh, the fastest way actually to install a disk image. Yeah, we'll cover about that. System image utility also has the feature to create what are called workflows uh, for distant customized images. So meaning you could add additional users and post install additional packages and things like this. So for those of you who've been to other sessions, probably Alistair's about InstaDMG. InstaDMG is a very good open source solution. System image utility there is, is uh, better in some ways, but and, and, and InstaDMG is a lot better in some other ways than system image utility. So what I'd recommend is, I'm not recommending this is better than InstaDMG. It's one of the solutions, just like a lot of different tools are out there. Um, I don't work for Apple, I work for Penn State, so I'm going to be, you know, I'll say what I, my personal opinion, I think InstaDMG is better at some things. It's a lot faster for caching files. But system image utility is still a great tool, and I, I've seen people use it because it's really easy to set up and very quick to use, so you don't have to use InstaDMG uh, to get the same effect using Net, Net Restore, for example. So try each one, see what you like, and use that particular tool. That's what it comes down to, because it's always like, well, I didn't want to bash this, and I don't want to use that at all. No, you should use what you like. What works for your environment is more important. Um, so, system image utility types. So the first one uh, is the net boot. And it's a generic definition up there. Boot from a server-based image. What does that really mean? Well, that means that basically the machine would boot up into a, um, a, a, a boot from the server into a complete um, installation of OS X. You have the finder, the desktop, you have networking, you have everything. And it's booting completely off the network from, from NetBoot. Um, so, and you can use the disk or not. And the reason you'd want to use disk is if you don't need to erase the disk uh, inside the machine, you want to use the disk and because NetBoot, whenever it needs to make changes, to the, if you open up a file and you edit it, it's using what is called a shadow file system. So changes you make to that file then get written to the local disk because NetBoot's doing a lot of magic in the back end. But when the machine reboots, those changes are lost. So that sounds scary. And it should be because you know if the machine crashes and they have to reboot, files are gone unless they're saving them to a network share or their flash drive or external firewall drive. Um, so then install. Um, a lot of people thought for years this was completely worthless. And why did Apple add it? Um, it was. Um, it's useful for, um, in, in my, uh, this is my opinion, um, it's useful for, again, if you have a pre-existing system that's running Snow Leopard and you want to upgrade it to line in place over the network, it's great for that because it's going to run package installers and do and install directly on that system uh, as well. So it doesn't erase the disk or anything else. And you can post install packages too and you can layer those on in some workflows, which I'll show. So it's great for that. Um, but the one that I think is probably going to be used the most, um, NetBoot would also be, I'm sorry, let me back up. NetBoot would also be a great utility to run diagnostic utilities uh, or system image utilities like what Deploy Studio does. It does a hack of a, deploy, of a NetBoot image, but it's really running a full NetBoot image and it happens to run its own admin interface. Blast Image Config 2, I'll have another session later today that I'll show you how I use NetBoot and run Blast Image Config from there, which is similar to Deploy Studio. They both have their pros and cons. Pick the one you want. I'm not going to get into religious war. I don't really care. Just use what you want. Uh, Net Restore also is great for restoring an ASR image, and it does a block restore. So it's really, really fast uh, at creating and erasing a drive and then installing an OS very, very quickly. In fact, I had to redo this machine here just right before the presentation. It was done in 10 minutes. I'm like, yay, because it was kind of messed up. Now it's good. 
So, uh, yeah, the restore converter restores volume over the network from an ASR disk image. So, and the ASR disk image can be created from the native line installer or a pre existing machine you've already set up as your golden um, lab Mac or enterprise Mac. So, netboot. Um, so, the netboot, to make a netboot image, um, and you're probably thinking, when is he going to get the system image utility and show me how to do this? We're going to do it, I promise. Uh, requires an existing OS 10 bootable volume. Uh, Pre-configured uh, pre by you with the account, use, the user accounts created, the applications installed. If you have login and logout hooks, you've got your printing set up, your authentication, authorization, all of the good stuff that you want. That would be on a machine, and you want the machine to be the newest one that you can, that you've updated with combo updaters to make sure the universal system is installed and contains all of the drivers for machines preceding it. Everybody knows about that, right? If you don't, make sure you use combo updaters whenever possible. So anyway. Um, yep, useful for small labs with the exact same setup. We discuss, I discussed that. Third-party imaging tools like Deploy Studio, Blast Image Config, and uh, yeah, essentially again, just a full OS 10 experience finder and all, everything. So it's pretty convenient for that. System image, uh, system image utility net boot steps. Um, you would, and then I'll jump over the server here in just a second. Uh, so in this case, there's a, you may not be able to see it on the slide because I know it's kind of small, but you'd select an already configured Mac volume. In this case, it's BIC, stands for Blast Image Config, um, not the pen. Netboot HD, and um, then you select Netboot Image uh, radio button and then click Continue. And then it would then prompt you for an administrator password so it has full access to all the files and then it would chug through and create an image. Um, and after you click create, it would say network, uh, there are two fields, network disk and description. The network disk field is what the clients would see when they netboot. And so, for example, what that's referring to, I'm jumping to the client now, eventually. Okay, so that's the client. So when the clients would netboot on newer Intel Macs, at the boot picker screen, you'll see some options. Um, but basically what they're talking about is the, these icons right here. So then install, so net restore 2012 lab Mac, that's me, Mac and Men's Lion system, and there it is. So net boot of BIC, net, oh, sorry, come on, go away. Net boot of MIC, uh, da, 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 wow. Net boot of BIC network HD. So that's what you're seeing there. That's the description in uh, page three. Okay, net boot of, so it's that same field. The description is something that you only as the assistant server administrator would see. They, they wouldn't see that, so you should probably keep it clean and not put anything weird in there. But you, you could put more details in there, says, does system build version blah, and then uh, creates this user for this particular lab location and things like that. So it's more so for the system admin to look at it later and say, what was this for, and what does this really have in it? So it's a nice way for you to keep notes, basically. All right, moving on. Yeah, and so uh, network disk, uh, this is where I'm actually saving the netboot image. Now, this is going to create a folder with the extension NBI. It stands for Net Boot Image, and there'll be a lot of files in that, and I'll show you on the server what that creates. You click Save, and then it would go through a process. Um, an image is the selected volume, creates a uh, Net Boot Wrapper OS inside that folder, um, and then create, copy, and then you would copy that created Net Boot Image folder to your servers, to a folder on the server. So one thing that people often ask is, well, do I have to do this always from the server? Do I have to run system image utility? Do I always have to run this directly when I'm on the server and connect into FireWire target disk mode on the server? No, no. You can actually install the system, the server admin tools on any Mac. It doesn't have to already be running Lion. And that was something that a lot of people just didn't realize. And I didn't even realize it either initially. I thought, oh, it's gotta be on the server, right? Nope. You can install it on any machine, and you can even copy system image utility to another volume on the machine and then make an image from there. So you do not have to run it from OS 10 server. They can run from anywhere on another machine. If you do want, if, if, though, um, when you do run it, you want to boot from another volume, another, another boot, a bootable OS to make an image of the internal Mac hard drive. You don't want to boot from the Mac's internal hard drive and make an image of itself running right there. That's generally not a good idea. Because there could be open files and things, and it's just, it, you'll have a, you'll, it may not let you, for one, it does a check. Um, but it also may not let you because of open files and things. It's not going to be as clean of a system, essentially. All right. 
Come on, switch. Keynote, okay. All right. So now, net, the, now the next images, the process through system image utility are basically the same. I'm not going to bore you with all the slides of showing now this is how you save a file, this is what you do. Yeah, we know. Exactly. Um, so uh, the purpose, though, of net install, um, if you do the basic net install with OS 10 Lion server app, it'll boot into the Lion Mac OS 10 utilities, uh, just as if you booted from the Lion recovery hard drive. Has, everybody, has anybody not done that, the Lion recovery partition, where you can command R or option boot recovery HD? I can show you that if you want to see how that looks. But, um, but basically, that would, uh, and then you could restore from Time Machine, reinstall Lion, run disk utility, things like that. So, um, and then you can, of course, install on top of existing Macs to Lion. So that's really what that's useful for. And that netboot image, the client would select it, boot from it, brings up that interface, and at that point you can do any of those options to the machine that it's running on. And that I forget, oh, okay, yeah. And you can modify that with additional workflows. You could partition the disk, install additional packages, post install. We'll talk about workflows here in a bit. And system image utility steps. Instead of clicking the net boot button, radio button, you select net install image. I'm pointing as if you can see it. Sorry, I can barely see it here. Net, net install image is a third option, so you'd click that, enter the network name, description, save location, and wait, because it could take some time to copy all that data uh, from the installer. This is a good time to tell your bosses that you need a really high-end fast machine with multiple SSDs really quick, because you have to support them with really fast, nice hardware, right? It just happens to be expensive. Maybe. So, you know. Anyway. Net restore, okay. Um, so net restore is really a lot of fun. So yeah, this was fun. Um, is anybody on the Mac OS X server, uh, Apple, Apple provided Mac OS X server list? Anybody, okay. I posted there probably about last, very recently, and I'm like, what the heck is happening? I would launch system image utility, and I would try, is it there? Okay. And I was trying to simply, I'm running on the server because it's conveniently already installed. And so I was cl clicking net restore, continue, and this is where you can create an extra Mac admin. Yeah, whatever. Password, sure. Um, okay, whatever. Wait, is the date correct on this one? No, it's not. Uh, that's right. Ah, that's because I have the workaround already done. At any rate, what happened is I would click the net restore, create, and it would just bomb out. I go and look at the log file, and I'm like, what is going on? This makes no sense. And it turns out to be related to the package apocalypse issue. This is the, the re, what's happening is, and this was the installer of Mac OS X Lion from the Mac application store for 10.7.3. It has some certs in it that have expired. So if... Um, what happens is when net, net install goes through the packages and looks at things, it does some checks. It says, wait a minute, these, these certs have expired on these particular packages. Nope, I'm going to fail. And it fails immediately. And I was like, oh, God. Because I really wanted to show net restore for this presentation, not net install, because I think more people will end up using net install, or excuse me, net restore. And so I posted the list, and everybody's like, oh, it's package apocalypse. And I'm like, really? Sure enough, it was. I changed my date. They, I read somewhere else, changed the date of, your, of the machine that's running system image utility back to February 1st. I did that, I re-ran it. I'm like, this is not gonna work. Wow, okay, it worked. Yay, good. So I changed my slides like three days ago. Um, so the workaround is changing the clock. The tiny URL there, if you can see it, is pkg dash or hyphen exp expired certs. Basically, if you search for that, our package apocalypse by Greg Nagel, he has a really good blog. Uh, a lot of great utilities. Um, I worked with him a lot on Mac Enterprise back in the day. Um, so he'll, he'll explain what's going on there too. I've heard a rumor that Apple is releasing 10.7.4 with the fixes in it soon to the Mac application store. I can say that because I'm not Apple. And I'm not under NDA for that. That was just a rumor. I don't know any other information than that. <laughs> Sounds like I was trying to hint that I do. I don't. Um, so you can use the install, so NetRestore is great for that. And if you just want to install CleanLion, it's going to create a much quicker install than, um, it'll create a new disk image. It runs through the packages, doing essentially what InstaDMD does. It takes the packages, installs them to a disk image, and then creates an ASR restore uh, disk image. It's a lot faster to restore that block disk image versus running through the installer and installing all the bits and, you know what I'm saying, decompressing the data and all this kind of stuff, right? So, um, NetRestore is great for that. 
You can also restore an image of a Golden Master Mac. Again, it would make an image, it would take a snapshot of, oh, you've Justin's lab machine, take an image of that as the source, and then uh, still create and spit out another uh, net restore image. So that restores, I think, what people really wanted in the long run, honestly. That install still is good, but I like net restore better. And uh, it's the same option, uh, same basic steps. So the, the, in the upper left-hand corner, your lab Mac in this case, um, there's install Mac OS 10 Lion. I should back up. These sources in the, in the left, oh, I can't highlight, okay. The, under there's a, we'll show it on the server as well. There's a sources drop down, and there are multiple entries there. Items that appear there are local volumes, and the, if it finds it on the local system anywhere, it doesn't have to be in slash applications, the install Mac OS X Lion install app, it will find it. I kept trying to move it, thinking, oh, I could change my slides, move this around, and it won't see it. Nope, it finds it. And every single volume, like, oh, God, I'm gonna have to delete it. So it's really good about finding it, which is heck, which is actually a handy thing, because you don't, that means you don't have to keep the install OS X Lion in slash applications. So. Um, then you would go, so getting back to the net restore step, you'd select the lab Mac in this case, network restore radio button, enter in the information and wait. So it's, you can see it's exact same steps. You're just telling it what kind of image to spit out. All right. So, uh, da -da. all right. Again, stop me if you need any clarification and things like that. Ex further extended questions, we'll definitely take, be glad to take at the end. And all right. Server administrator, okay. This is what you would use to enable and configure the NetBoot service. So jumping over here, that's this icon, uh, server admin. This is what I'm talking about. There are two different server administrator applications. There's the basic, hello? Oh, it's still firing up. I'm gonna let that fire up because it's gonna take a few to wake up, all right. Okay. So there's the server app that's installed uh, by default, and then the server administrator, server admin uh, tools, what I'm talking about right now. So there's the netboot process, and they're all green, so that means it's running, which is good. Um, so we'll go back, we'll get there in just a minute. You did, this, is, this is the utility that you'd use to enable and configure the netboot service, what images to use, um, filtering of Mac clients, which machines you want to allow to connect based on filtering of Mac addresses, and also machine types. Um, you also select the default netboot image. So on newer machines, I think starting with the silver, uh, the aluminum uh, based Macs, uh, Mac, the laptops, when you held down the N key, it would select the default netboot image. That's what that's talking about. On the newer machines though, if you hold the option key, you can still use the option key to bring up at, on power up the boot picker if from where security is not enabled. Well, it would ask you for the password, then you can get to it. And that's where it would show the internal drive and all of the available netboot uh, disks that are, that are available on the network being broadcast. Older machines wouldn't be able to show you all the additional disks. They would still just default to, to the old one. That's a backwards legacy support thing. Um, so, but server admin is the, the thing that once we've created the netboot image with system image utility, we'd move it into place and then server admin through the netboot uh, service, we would see it under the images tab, and I'll get to that so that they show up there, and I'll show you how that scans that. Um, I'm gonna breeze through the slides here because we're just gonna do it on the server, and hopefully it won't blow up, and the demo gods will be nice. So, um, adding the NetBoot service. Um, in the lower left-hand corner in the server admin, <coughs> we'd say add service, select NetBoot, and then click the save button. Make sure you don't move ahead until you see the, uh, the progress uh, pinwheel actually finishing. I have seen the server admin tool actually finish the process based on the logs, but that pinwheel keeps running, and I'm like, okay, is it done or not? What's going on? And I'll quit the app and restart sometimes, and it's fine. It's okay to quit the app as long as you've saved it because it's still running the process in the background. There's a process called Server Manager D and some other processes that are doing the heavy lifting of configuring the services. So, and, um, so once you clicked on Add Netboot Service, there's a new Netboot icon in the upper left upper left hand corner. Netboot it's gray, which means it's not currently active. You need to tell it where to store the images and client data, on what volume. And in this case, I've got Lion Server Lion Server data. I have a lot of partitions. Don't let that scare you. You could have them in the local drive or the others, but it's just it's easier to have an OS on one and your data on another in case you have to reinstall an OS. That's why I did that. 
and specify locations. So the images is where it would where it where the server the, where the netboot service should look for all of your netboot images. You can have them in multiple disks, which is really convenient and kind of nice um, because I have multiple partitions and I've got some here. I've got some on an SSD. I've got some on a NAS, a Drobo, or whatever. Drobos are slow. They're faster now. I need the newer version. Hmm. Actually, Promise makes a better RAID now, I think, right? Than the Drobo. Okay, off. off. Yeah, I'll get back here. Um, Anyway, so you can store them in multiple locations, tell where to get the data, uh, store the, you know, look for the images. The client data, that's talking about the diskless netboot option. When a machine does a, uh, if you do a diskless netboot option, that means it doesn't use the Mac's internal disk, which is where it would normally store all those temporary files, the shadow file system, right? Well, if you have a diskless netboot that says, don't use the Mac's internal disk, where should it store the files? Well, it's going to store it temporarily on an AFP share that the netboot server is making available for each client, and then it gets wiped after the machine reboots. Um, again, I jumped ahead, but it's kind of relevant to the slide here for the client data. Uh, okay, so in the netboot service, and I'll zoom this on the other screen because I know it's, it's going to be easier to see. You'd enable images, set your default, diskless option is what I just mentioned, while not using the local volumes, and then you'd say start uh, netboot which says stop here, but you'd say start. And everything just works, and it's always awesome, right? Never have any problems. Well, netbooting, as we kind of alluded to, can be a new voodoo situation sometimes, meaning it uh, doesn't work, doesn't start up correctly. Um, and I've had pretty good luck. Lion Server was a lot easier to set up for netbooting than 10.6, Snow Leopard was, Snow Leopard. They had the, disk, the diskless option, but I had to go through and enable AF, AFP myself, which is fine. I mean, we've all done those 10 servers you know, for a while, but. Lion server, setting up Netboot, did all of that automatically and it just worked. I couldn't believe it worked actually that quickly, which I was like, oh, great, cool. So that was nice to see that. Um, at any rate, so, and here's the demo time. And I'm crossing my fingers, everything works fine. We'll see how it goes. Okay, system image utility demo. And where to put the images. All right, let's do that first. So we'll get back to the apps here in just a second. All right, so. System image utility, again, this is where we would, thank you, thank you, yep. You can't see what I can see here? I see three machines, what's wrong? Yeah, thank you. is it off? I'm sorry, I thought I hit server. Okay, all right, I'm now looking at the server. Does everybody see server? <laughs> thank you, I, yeah, I need to get those eyes installed in the back of my head. <clears throat> okay, all right, we're good to go, all right, so, uh, the source is 10.7.3 client. I labeled it just so it's obvious what that is. You could call that Mac HD, whatever, but it's a little easier to tell what it is. I could use that as a source and click on Netboot or Net Restore. Uh, or the install Mac OS 10 line is a fresh installer. That is actually probably, I think, like I said, this is really good at finding it. There it is. The install Mac OS 10 line dot app. Um, or the Lion server. I have another session I'm doing, so I created another. Um, another server, it could use the OS from that as well to base and create the, the core uh, image. I, I'm not going to go through and bore you and we could just sit here and talk about how great the conference is and all that stuff, but if I go to continue and create, it's going to go through a bunch of different stages and then that'll take some time. Um, so when it goes through create, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to jump in the next slides about customizations that will go into more of the detail of how to override the defaults. So what I've showed you so far are basically the defaults. If I just click net install, continue, I haven't clicked customize yet. Customize is where I would throw in the workflows and do additional things that, it, that I want to add to it. We're not doing that yet. We will. Um, you click through and if you screw up, it's not our fault kind of thing. I'm sorry, what's that? You put it through a, a dialogue. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that was basically Apple saying you promised to be legal with their operating system licenses. That, and maybe that, yeah, you're right. Exactly. To say if you screw up and break things, it's not our fault. Yeah. Yeah, good point. Um, so what it will create is then a bunch of folders like, uh, well, as soon as you click Netboot or Create, and it goes through all the stages. Again, do I have that screenshot? I may. Uh, you don't want to see all that. That's just boring stuff. Workflows. Uh, anyway, It'll, it would basically go through the checkboxes. It has a bunch of different lines based on the type of image you've selected. It has different stages to go through. It'll have a green checkbox, and at the very end, it'll say done. 
once it's done, you've told it to save the data in a certain location. It's pretty good about knowing that, oh, your default location is um, in library netboot on the disk you selected. In this case, it's the folder I've saved it to is netboot sp0. As you add more servers, you'll have a different share point for the netboot folder. The netboot server process, uh, uh, forgive me, sorry. Okay, under netboot, under settings, <clears throat> lion server data, images, and client data are stored in, on that server, okay? So in the, going back to the finder, that's talking about lion server data, library, netboot. Here's the client, there's the lion, uh, 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 sorry, client data. I had caffeine this morning too, mm, it's not working. So that's where you would save AFP, but I also have, this is where all the netboot images are saved. Sometimes it's a good idea, if you have a lot of people using your server and actually netbooting from it, I recommend saving the netboot image on the disk there, but not in that folder, because I've seen it actually happen where it's in the process of creating that boot image, that netboot image isn't fully baked, and it now shows up as a bootable network, a netboot device for machines, and it doesn't work too well, because it's not completely baked, it's not all the way there, right? So try to save it outside of that folder. Once it's created in the system image utility, if you're doing it on the server, that is, then move it over so it's an autonomous action then that's available and that's ready to go. I just happened to do this on the server. Again, system image utility, you can run on a different machine, boot it from a different volume than the one you want to image. So in the netboot sp0 folder, let's go to list view. And so these are the images. And you can tell based on the previous folder you saw disabled, I created a lot of netboot images. And you, and you will do that. You'll try some image, don't kick yourself, you're saying, why does this not work? Post to the lists, reach out, talk to the people on the forums because I didn't know about the net restore package or apocalypse. I almost gave up on that, and I posted, and they're like, oh, do this, and I'm like, thank you. So um, if you're stuck, make sure you read the Apple documentation and reach out and ask people saying, hey, this is what I've done, this is what the log says, and go from there. You know, that's what we're paid to do as system admins, right? Uh, so net restore, uh, da, 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 which one do I want to show? They're all basically the same format, but you really won't need to go into this folder too much for things like net restore and net install. The net boot is more interesting in some cases because that's easier to modify and I'll talk about how to do customizations of that. Um, but net restore, th there's basically a net boot image uh, .plist. This is where you can actually go and you can hand edit this if you want, be careful, because it's XML, XML is obviously very readable, it's very easy to edit, you can use text edit or, or whatever, text string or BB edit, whatever your favorite is. MacVim is also pretty good. Let's get into an argument about which text editor is better, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> uh, under description, so this is where you can change it to whatever you want. I actually mislabeled one in the UI and I'm like, wait a minute, this is putting, what's going on? So I, you can change it in here. Disabled system identifiers, huge list there, all of the different model identifiers, which you can get under about this Mac. Uh, yep, more info. And system report, and that's talking about that model identifier right there. So if you want to do restricted machines, you can look and use system profiles to get the model identifier and do more filtering on that. We'll talk about filtering, but since that's there, that's why I was mentioning it. Under the name, uh, the, oh, that's just a quick view, Justin. Net restore, I've installed Mac OS X Lion and the root path. So pretty much don't touch any of the other fields. Uh, it's okay to touch the name in the description, but after that I really wouldn't mess with anything else. So, so of course, users are not gonna care about the build number of 11D5, oops, sorry, 11D50. They're just not gonna care, right? Why bother with them with that information? Again, that's for the server admins, us. And then net installs the actual image. It's 4.96 gigs, and that's Lion, uh, the Lion installer encompassed into that disk image. Then there's a bunch of stuff inside of this other folder called i386. I thought I had an i7 in here. Just kidding. Um, these are files used by Netboot. It's a TFTP in the machine. There's a booter, a kernel cache, and all this. Don't touch the files, we'll leave them there. They're essential for Netbooting the machine. When the machine boots up, then it sort of serves these files to this, and these are the core essential files that the Mac needs to boot up over the network to get, have all of its system uh, resources available. And, uh, okay, all right, so 
one system image utility is spit out a netboot image folder, and I'm not going to go through all the others because that will be uh, tedious and you'd be bored. You might be bored now, but you'd be even more bored, and I don't want that. Under netboot, enable net uh, network, boot, network boots. Are, okay, well, I've already done it. I could remove it, and we'll cross the fingers. Sure. All right, I'm going to stop the service, and now it's grayed out, and I'm going to say, you want to remove this service? Sure, I'll be risky. And now I want to add, okay, so now, all right, so Justin's crazy for doing this in a live demo, but I have another, I have another server uh, partition, so it does go all nuts, and I've done this, so I'm pretty sure it's going to work fine. So I have my server, and I'm using server admin to connect to the local machine. I'll say connect. It's already got the cached um, credentials. Netboot should have been removed. Oh, I'm doing it wrong. Sorry. Let's remove that service. Oh, it may not let me. <coughs> thank you. Yes, I uh, thank you. Yep. And services. Thank you. Whoever said that. Thank you. Yep. All right. Pay no attention. I should have switched away. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, all right, so Netboot's not added to the server now. <laughs> That's how you remove it. Um, the way to add it, you go to, you log in to server admin, and again, you have to do this through server admin that you've already downloaded and installed, and connect it to the server on the local or from another machine, remote, remote it in through the application. Add service, click on Netboot, and click on save. Spinning wheel, yay, it's all done. Okay, go to Netboot. Enable the appropriate network interface. You can go over multiple if you want. Um, it's already smart enough and it's found it. It might be using pre-existing preferences, but if they weren't checked and you know that that's where your server data is or you want it to be, checking those checkboxes. If those folder, if that folder structure, uh, library Netboot, uh, Netboot clients, Netboot SP0, all of those, if they don't exist, when you click save, they will get created automatically for you. And then I would click, even though it doesn't look like, yep, um, don't need to save, because I was using that. Okay, now, here are all of the images. These are the direct images, again, in the netboot images folder. Um, so for example, I've got a netboot of BIC as the default. Um, so if I quit out, and I go to my library folder, just to make the connection here for folks, and, uh, where is it? I'll just have to guess. I think it's that one. Yep. Let me take that one out. Okay. And that may be mad because it's the default. That may not be a good option. Let me put that back. I did. Yeah. Thank you. Oh boy. Yeah. It looks like it almost did. All right. Let's put that back in. The reason I'm not going to do that one because I kind of alluded to it. You want to be careful. I don't recommend, I, when you're in Netboot, in the settings and images, it's, I would recommend not moving the one that's the default. Change your default first before you move that particular one. It's probably just a better idea. Um, so let's pick one that we don't really care about. Uh, the 2012 Mac. Okay, we'll get rid of that one. Just to move it out. Come on. All right, so I'm just going to move that. That's, yeah, finder sometimes behavior of columns drives me nuts. All right, so I'm going to quit out of the server app, just let it refresh. And if I go to server, back into server admin, select netboot, settings, images, now it's not there. So the 2012 is what I just moved out, I think. I hope so. Yes, so net restore of 2012 lab Mac. Now that I've moved that folder out, it's no longer available as a default disk image. So it's literally that simple, right? And enable images at default and diskless options. Okay. All right. So on the net install, the default image, uh, rather, these types of netboot images, they, a diskless option is not required at all because that type of, it's a controlled environment. It doesn't need, it's not a full finder experience. The user can't create files and make changes. So it doesn't need to offer the diskless, diskless option at all. So that's why it's grayed out and you can't select it. However, on the top boot, uh, netboot image, which I have finder booting up and last image config running, I do need diskless available. And so that's why that is available to select. 
Um, I don't have to select it there, but I did because I need to have the internal disk released. So, and another disk image is, of course, not enabled right here, net restore of install Mac. Um, because my demo is really going to be more about the fun one about the configurations. They're all fun, but yeah, we want to talk about the customizations, right? Okay, so I'm going to quit that. I'm going to move that back in and move on to the customizations part. Switch the video because you guys want to see the slides. I want to make sure you can see them too. Okay, so that was that's the basic setup. So using system image utility to create the netboot images, copy them to the server. If you, if you created them on another machine, using server admin, add netboot service. I think I left that active. i to make sure I did. So the next part of the demo actually works. I did not start it up. I'll start it up. All I'm doing is, all I'm doing is, it's grayed out, so of course it's not running. Settings, images, everything looks fine. And go away. I'm going to change that to the default. Never start Mac and Min's Lion system. I'll start Netboot, and it's good to go. So these machines are on a local subnet between the two because it's, they're connected by a, via gigabit Ethernet. So, not there's no switch. I could have used one, but the newer laptops auto negotiate between each other quite nicely. They've, yeah. They cross over on their own. Yeah. Yeah, it's, pre it's pretty neat. Yep, I tried. To, I did a test actually connecting each to a switch and did some restore times and then directly to each other. They're actually faster to each other, which is pretty cool. But you don't want to use too short of a, a cable, believe it or not, because then there's not enough time. I forgot, the, there's some physics behind it. Electrons f passing too fast, which I thought, okay. <laughs> so make sure you use a longer than three foot cable. So it needs latency What's that? I think it's a latency issue or something like that. It's, I don't know, it's a handshake. Ah, I don't know. I just. I just read the stuff and do it. So, yeah. All right. Oh. Smack me, somebody. Customizations. All right. So, there are two ways to customize the Netboot images. Uh, the first one is using system image utility workflows. It uses Automator. It's kind of a strange thing. It calls it Automator. But is it, has anybody used Automator? Okay. So, you're familiar with the basic how it works with workflows and stuff. And it's, it's pretty and it works pretty well most of the time, and then it's kind of confusing in which order to put them in, but it works pretty well. System image utility is using that kind of uh, method. Um, you can also customize your netboot images, too, and we'll talk about that. That's more of a manual process for who, people who want to get down to the nitty-gritty, changing specific files and copying them from a golden master and moving them back to your netboot image, so we'll talk about that. So first, we'll cover our system uh, image workflows, and... Um, you can, uh, uh, workflows will allow you, instead of just installing the, uh, the basic line installer, that would then go through the user setup saying, hey, hi, welcome, pretty, you know, <coughs> graphics and all this fun, gooey stuff. Um, it would, you can add things that already creates a user for you automatically. So, um, yeah, I'll get there. I'll get there. I want to show you so much, I want to get there right now, but we'll get there. Um, then you can also post install additional packages and scripts if you have special printer drivers or something or any additional packages that you have at your own institution because you used Package Maker to make them, you can add them here. Um, you can partition disks and a lot more other uh, workflows, such as what these are available. Um, I'll show this dialog here on the, on the server here in just a minute. But you can uh, do things, yeah, add user account, create an, uh, a customized package selection. So if you have an installer that has a bunch of different selections in it, you can uncheck some options to make the installer go faster. And to find net restore source, I had problems with that working. What that allows you to do is, uh, we've only talked about creating a net restore of, an, of a machine and, and baking that into the net restore image so the data's all right there. Well, net restore uh, source allows you to specify HTTP URLs or it's our multicast server URLs. So there's a way with, uh, for the net restore source you can specify a URL to go and get your image and restore it that way. I could not get it to work. I got it working on Snow Leopard. I have not been able to get it to work on Snow, uh, on Snow Lion. <laughs> wow, on Lion. So um, has anybody had that? Any luck with that working? Or have, has, anybody, has anybody tried that? No? OK. It's kind of convenient in the sense that you can store your server on an, any web server. Um, you can't do auth, I don't believe. So you want to have it behind a firewall and all of the necessary security so that doesn't get out. But 
uh, for your own protection, of course, on the OS. But uh, at any rate, so yeah, workflows. Sorry, I'm moving a little faster so we can get time to q and I want to make sure we have time for that. Okay, so system image uh, utility workflows must start with a defined image source, which is the first circle at the top. Um, and then they need to be connected. Connected means you should see this icon right there with a little triangle and a circle. If you are in system image utility and you're doing a workflow and you don't see that, that means there's not going to be continuity and it's going to stop. It will not work. That's a requirement. So the first thing has to be define image source and then create the image at the very end. So you have to have those when you're doing workflows. Um, demo, good, yay. Customizing net, net restore example. This, in this particular one that I did, you can do whatever by dragging them in. I'm gonna show you a demo of how to create two partitions, add a package installer, and then enable automatic installation. Be careful enabling automatic installation. It does not prompt you at all. It gives you a few seconds to say, are you sure you wanna erase this disk and blow away all data on it? Uh, yeah, sure. So be really careful with that. I did it for the demo demonstration here. Do what's applicable for your environment. If you blow away and erase your drive, it's not my fault. So let's switch over to the demo of how that would work. Okay. So I've got the default image already. This is an netboot image that's already been created with the stages, uh, the workflow I just mentioned. And it might still have been saved. If not, it's easy to build. Oh, good. There it is. Yay. Okay. Um, I'm going to do some zooming in, unless it makes people motion sickness. Sometimes it does, so forgive me if, if, if it does, just let me know. Come on, no. Zoom. I don't think I have it enabled. Can everybody see the screen or would it help to zoom in? You can see, okay? Okay, all right, we'll just save that then. <coughs> okay, so I've already, what you can do is when you want to create a new netboot, um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'm not gonna save that right now. All right, so here's the cool part. Let's say I wanna take, let's say the 1073 client is the hard drive in this machine, which is this partition right here. And I wanna use it as the base OS. Actually, I take that back, I'm sorry for my demo, I'm using the Lion installer, apologies. I would say install Mac OS X Lion and say net restore, and I could say continue. Well, it has some, def this is a default workflow, they just have a pretty interface on it. You can create the name and short name and password and verify, which is really kind of nice. Saves you some time, right? Well, we're going to add more to it. We're going to actually customize it. I'm going to click back, click on customize, and click the agree that, you know, I, if I shoot myself in my foot, it's my fault type thing. And now you'll see a new automator uh, library window up here. And what you do is uh, you move these over. So we've got the add user account and the define and the create image. That's the default that Apple provides you. That's what they're doing if you didn't customize, okay? So if I have my, I have my thing, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and replicate this. Not going to, I'm going to not try. We, there is no try, there is only do. <laughs> We're gonna do a partition disk. So we'll, uh, so we'll do partition disk, enable automatic installation, add packages and post install and add user account. If you try this, and you're thinking, well, what order does it go in? Sometimes it's not obvious. You're like, well, where do I put this? What is it? Like automatic installation. I would think that I'd want to have that like one of the first things so that it does everything else automatic. But there's a gotcha because it requires something. And I'll show you what that something is. Uh, all right, first thing we need to throw in there is partition disk. So we'll jump back to server, system image utility. I'm going to close this so we can see what we're doing here. And... Uh, I'm looking for it, I'm sure it's here. There it is, partition disk, okay. So we're gonna move that up there. I'm gonna create two partitions, just for fun. And system, I'm gonna call one of them system, which is the boot system, okay, seems like a good name. I'm gonna say it needs to be a minimum of 30 gigs, so you have some nice options here. I'm gonna call the second one data. You can call it users, Snoopy, whatever you want. Garfield, Transformers, okay. And so we'll save that, and I'll say, and data, I should have changed that, but it didn't. Oh, I know why. You can also set other changes like 20, you know, the, if it's 25% or at least 30 gigs, whichever is larger, I believe, and then so. Okay, now the critical part here that I'm 
in the partition. Because I'm calling it system, remember that. That's going to be important next. And so jumping back, keynote, the second thing, enable automatic installation. That's why that's the important one to put right after that. This is obviously customizing through workflows. There we go. Enable automatic installation. I'm going to now move that in. And now this is why it's important. Enable automatic, inst um, automatic installation on the volume. I don't want the users to select it. I want this to just cook and go, right? So in the name field, I'll type in system. So now I've partitioned the disk. We know what the disk name is. And it's system and boom, 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 go. And I want to erase before installing. There will be an, a warning option that will tell you, hey, are you sure you want to do this? So, all right. Now the next one, jumping back, is add packages and post install scripts. Okay, so I'm going to collapse that. And I'm going to add packages and post install after enable. I'm going to find a package uh, that I have. I'll close this so we can see where we're going. And on the line server data, I'm going to use the server admin tools because I'm creating a bootable disk for system admins, right? It just happens to be, it just happens to be server admin tools. It could be iPhone or whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Any package installer, but this one's convenient, so we're going to use that. And now what that's going to do is partition the disk, enable automatic installation, and after it installs Lion, it's not very obvious that it's going to do it after, it's going to post install server admin tools automatically for me in slash applications server. Kind of convenient, right? So we'll move that. What's next? Add user account is already there. And so we'll configure that, and then we're done. And so add user account, you can set your default here. So I can call, say, Mac admin, Mac admin, and then password. Hi there, secret password. Yeah, whatever. And then you can say allow user to administrate the computer. So what the, again, this will take. The install Mac OS X line as a base OS, okay? It will partition the, the, you'll boot it from the network. I'll show you if we've got some time. It will partition the disk automatically, give you a warning to say, are you sure you want to do this? Enable and add packages. Once it's done install, installing the Lion package that's already been created pretty quickly, it'll then add the, um, the server admin tools automatically. Then it'll create the user for me and it's good to go. Because we need to, because I need to end at 10:30, um, I'll sh I'm going to move a little bit quicker, um, and I want to give you time some, some time for Q and A. So I apologize for that. Um, the other option I was, the other customization was going to be modifying the netboot image. That's actually pretty easy to show, but I do want to show the netboot process if everybody would like to see that from this workflow, the disk image. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Where are we? All right, so that's how you, and then, of course, I'm, one more time. After selecting all of these and adding all of your workflows, you'd save it. It would appear under the workflows, and you can use that later to create another one. So once you get a new install, Mac OS X Lion, install it from the Mac App Store, put it in place, it'd be 10.7.4, and hopefully the package receipts will be updated. Yay. And then you'd click Create, and it would create you a new one from there. And the workflow that you created that you know works will probably work again, hopefully. So you could say run or save at this point. I've already saved it, so I don't need to save it this, uh, right now because it's already been created. So that restore. So that's this disk image here. Again, it's on the data drive. Library, netboot. And I saved it here. Where is it? There we go. Yep, Mac admin Lion system. I'm saying Mac admin Lion system again because it has Mac admin server tools. Kind of useful for us in the room. And Keynote. All right. And modifying netboot images, that was going to be a manual installation. Um, given the time factor, I'll show you this one a little shorter than I wanted to, only because um, this one's more involved. Um, only because you'd have to modify some different files. So. Under library, netboot, netboot images, I'll select the one that actually is a formalized netboot full install. So uh, this is my baby. I better be careful with this one. I'm kidding. I have a backup. Everybody backs up all the time, right? Right. So now I'm going uh, to mount the netboot.dmg and the netboot image folder. This is an actual read-write disk image. 
So this was made of a Mac that already had it configured. Took an image of that and put it in that disk image. Well, it's read writable, which is really, really nice. Let's say you screwed something up on this. I never screw up, but let's say that somebody, no, I do all the time, right? We make mistakes. We forget to install something, we forget to clear caches, whatever. Um, leave notes on the desktop to yourself, pick up the milk after work. You know, I don't recommend doing that on a Golden Master, but um, anyway, I would forget to add something as a startup item or otherwise. You could collect the files using FS Eventer, which is that icon there, and you can run it as an application with root. You would make the changes on the machine. It would show a graphical representation of what files are being changed. You would copy those, remember the path, and then copy them back into your netboot image that you've mounted. I know that was a summary. I would show you more of that, but I want to get to the netboot, and I apologize for that. Um, that was the other, that's so, this is basically the manual uh, editing of the netboot images. It will, do you have to do it this way uh, with using FS Inventor? No, you don't have to. It saves you time if you're comfortable doing the terminal and things. So if you're not comfortable doing the terminal, that's okay. You don't have to do that. You could just remake it again using SIU with your already saved workflow and say, oops, I forgot to do some stuff. You're leaving for the day. Let it run overnight. Just use that new NetBaby image folder, copy to server, and you're good to go. So you don't have to do the manual option if you don't want to. And NetBooting the client. All right, this is where we pray to the demo gods that everything works. And netboot is enabled, and I've got the default there. All right, I'm gonna boot this guy. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna restart. Ah. I'm gonna hold the option key and hope it shows up here. If it doesn't, uh, yeah. <laughs> Meaning, sometimes there's been a weird video mirroring issue with, with um, this is so early in the boot process, it doesn't have a chance to mirror the video out to the VGA switcher. So what I may do is just flip the laptop around and you can see. Oh, come on. This is so pretty. All right, so I option booted it. And I'm gonna carefully show. So I held down the option key and you'll see a bunch of disks with a bunch of different globes on there, right? Okay, so no magic here, I promise. And I'm gonna select the one that says, mm, I have a lot of them there. Why did I create so many? Net restore, it's scrolling by as we see it's like a ticker, Mac admin lion system. All right, so I'm gonna net boot that one. That'll show up here. I promise it'll show up. I tested it right before this session. Come on. Oh. So here's an apple. There's a globe going, it's searching. It's doing a broadcast on the network. It's saying, hey, are you out there? It's talking to this, this server. The server says, yes, hi, how's it going? I'm sorry? Yeah. It will show a video here in a, in a moment, I think, because it did last time. Now it's showing the spinning wheel, which means it's happy and it's got a, net, a valid net boot image. I'm sorry for running late, everyone. Come on. You're killing me. While that's net booting, I'll jump back, I promise. I do want to show you some other options. You can also, so I just use the N key on booting up. There are other options you can use using the bless command. You can do this through ARD and push uh, shell command scripts. You, this is what I was talking about. And if you do a man space bless, you'll find out how you can do a specific server. Again, the slides will be available, I promise. Um, pretty soon on the Mac admin site because I'm one of the guys who controls it. Um, the specific server, you would say bless hyphen netboot server BSDP and then the IP of the server. You can't use fully qualified domain name, unfortunately, I wish you could. But the really cool feature is, let's say you only want to netboot just the next time, right? There's the dash dash next only option, pretty cool. It's really nice to use. So if you have a bunch of machines, you have ARD, you want them to netboot, use this command, boom, netboot, they'll netboot on the next only, they'll do their thing, restore or whatever, they'll reboot back to the internally stored drive, yes? You can, good question. Um, you can specify which netboot image to specify, uh, to boot from in the bless man, but bless page will tell you how to specify that. But if you don't, so it the default? Yes, sorry, yes, it uses the default, correct, right. 
there's a caveat to that. I've had a, net boot, a default netboot image selected, and it keeps defaulting boot, the Mac boots from the previously defaulted selected one. I'm like, ah, no. So that's worked kind of. I, I think you're right. I think caches. Yeah, netboot always, what I've seen is it always remembers the last one you netbooted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be that the machine's doing that. The next option is broadcast from netboot server. So this one says, I don't know. I just want to boot up from the, the from any netboot server that answers. Nope. I got to show you this. Hopefully this will show up. Come on. It's not. I'll okay. This is installing Mac OS 10 right now. It's doing a restore of the image. It's hauling because it's an ASR uh, disk image. Once it goes through, and I apologize, I, I can show you. Capturing this video, of course, is tricky. Uh, once it's completed, it will then install the package and then create the user, and then the machine will reboot, and the system is good to go. Come on. I'll try to leave that without unplugging anything for those who want to see. I know it's pretty far away. Apologies, video switching at net booting time is kind of difficult. Yes, sir. So, uh, serving uh, a line image requires line of server. Can line server serve previous systems? Yes, I'd have to read over Apple's documentation. To read their, doc their documentation is at www.apple.com slash server. And uh, tech support. Res additional resources and then documentation from there. So if you Google for li uh, Lion, Mac OS X Lion server documentation, you'll find the URL that will then talk more at, about that at length. So um, that was the option key booting to show the netboot HD. Tips and tricks we talked about. Enabling ARD on your custom netboot images. Yeah, that's a nice option. If you have a netboot option where you're booting into the full Finder OS, one of the recommendations is that you enable ARD so you can connect to that. So if you've net booted all of your lab into a net boot image and you want to see how they're doing and you don't want to have to leave your office, right, because your coffee will get too cold, you can actually remotely connect through ARD if you have a default username and password. It's kind of nice. It's one of the tips. There's a URL available, support.apple.com slash KB slash TS3678. That's troubleshooting net boot. It's a really good article to read. Highly recommended. And... I'm sorry for uh, pushing it so far here. I can talk for a few minutes for questions, so. Sorry, oh, sorry, yep, people are writing down the URL. Apologies, yes, yeah. What are some of the advantages of using system utility instead of uh, DMG? Supported by Apple. <laughs> some of the workflows are a little easier. You don't have to do, a com you don't have to do command line stuff. Um, and so DMG takes a lot more command line uh, awareness. So uh, I would say it's probably the, the user interface. Some people are not as comfortable with the command line, which is fine. Um, but I do like some of its uh, other options of making some of the workflows a little easier. It's, easy, it's sometimes easier to manage some post-install packages. Yes? I was always under the impression that it is that the Google Studio and image is a lot smaller than one that's made with system utility because it doesn't have all, a lot of the extra stuff. That, that might be true, but there, let's, yeah, that may be true, but what's the advantage, really? I mean, Deploy Studio does a great job. Yeah, definitely. Please fill out your feel free to uh, hand, a, hand in your feedback as you as you exit whenever you're ready. Um, it does, but it doesn't hurt if the netboot image is larger. Really, it's not going to slow it down from booting or anything per se. Um, but Deploy Studio does make its own custom netboot image. It's smaller, but they do that because they don't need the extra stuff to copy over, and they do that because it helps them create a netboot image faster. They don't need to include the Finder and all of the applications because it's just their shell of just their admin app. But yeah, it is smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have a situation where everybody's image is almost identical except a serialized CAD software. That is, type that it's got a code in the, in the slash library app support, whatever. Okay. That is unique to each. Yes. Tied to the Ethernet ID. Yep. Now, is that something I could script in to shove that in at the end of the install? Yes, there's a by host. Yep. That's always a trick with Macs where you have the unique identifier. What you can use is there's a package. I believe there's a workflow option that changes um, by host configuration. And so you'll want to check that out. But if it's an application being specific about a serial number, you'll have to use some other software distribution method that if you have a lab, you'll have to manually push them out sometimes. We have the problem in our own labs. But if you can get a key server or a FlexLM version. If I, if I build an image yeah. in 
deadly storage, can I build into that ambit the script that runs at the end of the restore that I would just Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. I forgot to mention the post inst the good question. The post install the package uh, the package installer where I sh added the script for server admin tools. You can also add scripts that will run and in and modify the restored volume. It'll pass into that the restored volume. And so yes, you can. Yes. And then you can have your own table of MAC addresses or something yeah. and saying, oh, this one gets this file. So yes, you can. And I've I've done that before. Good question. Yes, sir. Um, you said you have to have be running Lion server to in order to deploy a Lion boot image. Yes. Uh, is that true with all the other versions? Like you know, if you have Snow Leopard, uh, uh, can you do you have to have be running Snow Leopard to deploy Snow Leopard and so on and so forth? I would check with Apple's documentation to be absolutely sure on that. I don't know 100% for sure. Uh, it's always recommended to do that. I, whether it's full, whether it's really required, I don't know. It's prob it probably would work. I see what you're saying. Could, it, the, the only thing I ask is it's yeah. a hell of a lot easier to migrate over clients as opposed to, you know, oh, hey, I need to update my entire server. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. What might work is if you have a 10.6 server, but you want to deploy a 10.7 NetBoot image. If you created that NetBoot image with system utility on a machine running 10.7, it probably will put in the right things in that NetBoot image folder, and 10.6 server might be able to distribute that correctly because it's just transferring files at that point. Yeah. That so it, work. it might work, it may not. It doesn't work now? Okay. Yeah. Uh, is it doing? Uh, it, the server, it won't see mm. servers, like even the 10.6 Oh, well, they might be doing a sanity check. I think that's For safety. Oh, uh, that's a good point. Okay. Uh, okay, I gotcha. Apple trying to get us to buy stuff again. <laughs> <laughs> is there any way for this flow to do custom disk names? Yes, there's a volume uh, slash dot vol DB and other files. Yes, you can rename disks. But yeah, you have to figure out what files there, but yeah, you can. Actually, ye yes, there, are, there is an additional option I have invested, I have not investigated further. This might help you with that. Um, in system image utility, there are, there's a section called variables. It might be putting information in that. So if I go to variables in here under the automator workflow, it might say, yep. I don't, have not messed around with these much, but this might be source volume. Okay. So this might help you out with that. I would read the, docu the documentation for that one. That's a good question. That's what I was alluding to when you partition the disk, create two system data, system gets passed to you know, the automatic workflow because it needs to know the system name. But you're asking for, I realize, a different name maybe. I'm in a business environment. Yeah. And we have names on the computer. It's sure a lot easier to talk to people than having computer four, computer five, computer six. Absolutely. Yeah, it's like the room number. It's like, what am I in? I'm, I'm like, I don't know. It's not labeled in here. I'm at the Penn Stater, so. Yeah. You could, you, you could also do a, Oh, yeah. You want to change the name of the boot volume disk? No. The disk name? Yeah. So you, I'm, doing, I'm not talking about net boot, so I just restore and restore. Mm -hmm. Install the software. Mm -hmm. I want the hard drive's name to be unique based on mm -hmm. you know, I can pick Ethernet ID or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's a hidden file. There used to be a while back um, at the base of the disk. Uh, yeah. Hey, Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why not? Why not name all of the disk drives the same, and then when they called, say, click on the system icon on your desktop. 
Because then it's consistent through the users, or I mean, it's your environment, so you know it better than I do, obviously. Yeah, just, so, yeah. The easiest thing to ask you what I've found is, what's the name of your, what's the name of the hard drive? Oh, okay. The icon kind of the overriding corner. What's right. The name right. Right. Yep. Yep. And, it's, and, if, and if it's there, if it's you know, go get lunch because they were in that icon is so the sticky. You know. Right. Right. Yep. 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 Gotcha. Is it okay. possible to take um, images created by system by utility and use them to deploy Studio? I think so. Yeah. Prob, I believe it, I believe so because the, the disk images, you'd have to dig through the folder structures. Um, so yeah, if you wanted, to, if you for some some reason wanted to migrate to to deploy Studio or Blast Image Config, uh, you can reuse disk images that way because they're they're standardized in that sense. I'm sorry, what was your question? As long as you're using always the newest OS with the combo updaters on the, uh, the system, it should. You'll still run across problems where they don't work for some reason or another. 